Uh, okay, so basically, what started my conversation about this before recording is I felt Danny's hair looks very Luke-ish in that looks like the character Luke or young George Lucas. <laughs> I'm sure all of our listeners will appreciate provide more of a description so they can picture along with us. Okay, so it's brown. <laughs> it's wavy. It's boy hair. Oh. <laughs> well, now, now, I'm, now I'm seeing it in my mind's eye. Yeah, now. Um, okay, what did you guys think about the characterization of, of Boba Fett? Oh, the spoilers for Mandalorian. Skip to eight minutes to avoid spoilers. Thank you. <laughs> what? Boba <laughs> Fett's back? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> On the real, what did you... Does anyone have any feelings? Ah. I didn't understand why Boba Fett didn't just get his armor back from that guy earlier. Why you had to wait yeah, for this whole man. convoluted yeah. plot. Like, Boba Fett is shown... <laughs> As being like the best badass, he could have easily got it off that random sheriff. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I've been watching Cod Vance for the last. Eight Wait, years. did he say? Did he say he had been watching him, or did he just like? like... He just dropped his name. He's like, I knew who you got it from. It's like, wait, yeah. oh, you knew, so... but he was a real rough and tumble sheriff in town, and I wouldn't. Yeah, have known. he would have been a lot easier to get it from than that. But <laughs> than Mando, yeah. yeah. But I, I liked, I liked just his whole. That whole episode was probably my favorite. Uh, where he just just is kicking ass and taking stormtrooper names and like that's like Danny was like this feels like Game of Thrones just seeing like hand to hand combat in a Star Wars universe with a yeah it was close definitely a similar Game of Thrones <laughs> <laughs> but just they do break that one story yeah that was that that moment in general I I wanted more I wanted more of that and also like can they just just hit one thing. Just one thing hit someone. Oh, the stormtroopers? <laughs> yeah. No, they did in the very next episode. Oh, what, what they? Yeah, they, what they. They'll only hit characters that can't get killed. So, like, they'll hit Mandalorian many oh, times. Oh, they'll hit all those. They'll hit those pirates. Them. Yeah. Oh, they come to the rescue and mow down some poor, like, you know, civilians. The I I liked Boba Fett for sure, but I felt Jordan, like you're saying, he's always been my impression. I've owned a Boba Fett, Boba Fett T-shirt, and I'm not trying to brag. <laughs> And it was like fun. And I've always felt very strong with it on. And I felt, you know, Boba Fett is like a, yeah, kind of a, he's a bad dude. You know, he's a rough and tumble. I felt like he was a real homie in this, which I'm not mm-hmm. rejecting offhand. Oh, yeah. It's, that can be nice to see, um, especially in these uh, times. But I feel like, yeah, he like made, he want, like was going to make a deal with Mando. You know, he's like, you made the armor, will not, will not attack the child. And then Mando doesn't do it. And then Boba Fett just goes and lifts the armor himself out of the open ship. <laughs> and then he's like, well, I'm a man of my word, so I guess I'll still do the <laughs> save your kid thing. <laughs> I go, oh, all right, guy. And he paints his, then he paints his armor. Yeah, he gives it a touch-up job. I'm like, you just had yeah. a paint set? Uh, yeah, with the exact yeah, colors uh, that you needed. Yeah. It's fine. And you can, work, you can work out that little dent Look, in the helmet? he had no, years the to figure there. out the exact color Yeah, scheme. no, no, I'm saying, if you're going to, like, touch it up. like yeah. He was rather it. polite. He was more polite than I thought he was going to be. I mean, or yeah, he was very more sweet. agreeable. And then, and then, you know, at the, in the, the final post credit scene, you're like, okay, so this is the, this is the asshole that we all mm-hmm. thought you were. Yeah, he wanted, he just wanted a big chair, ultimately. <laughs> I, so, why, are they gonna, the Book of Boba's gonna start, and he's gonna, like, have gained 30 pounds sitting in that chair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, like, the armor he's like, just... like, Wasa Weeboo Solo. Like, <laughs> also, can we talk about that title? Book of Boba. What do we think? I mean, I hate books it. were finally introduced <laughs> as canon materials okay, that's in a the really Star Wars point. universe in The Last Jedi. So mm-hmm. and we know their fate. That was probably what they're fine. That was probably one of the books that Luke had, because uh, that does take place post Mandalorian. Uh, Boba text. He, he, he has the ancient, about Boba Fett. The ancient Boba text. The book of Boba. <laughs> it's it's aged like forty years or whatever. That's it. I just hate the idea of it as a like having it as a name for a TV show. Yeah. There could be an old western with starting with like the book of John. But those Wayne, were also you know? movies. I think right. I, I think I'm getting like the you know like the jungle book vibe where I'm like I'm like oh the book of Boba it's gonna be like this fun John musical Favre presents jungle yeah, book adventure. <laughs> yeah but uh I think it's fun. It's, are they just gonna jump around and just they're gonna just tell random one off stories. I don't know. They said it's gonna be a limited series. So. Great. I, I I want more of him just like just beating on Stormtrooper. It was fun. Or more, more Bib Fortunas. Yeah, yeah. You know, whoever's <laughs> the big guy sitting in a chair. Just Let me ask chairs. another technical question. Yeah. Um, 
do flame do flamethrowers honestly stop other flamethrowers if I you th- yeah, it, it is now like <laughs> real question it's the only universe where you can actually fight fire with fire <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was like i was like i was like how do i even google this like that was my gut my first instinct was like is that how they work i i don't know that it isn't <laughs> But I'm like, what would you, know, you know, flamethrowers actually have to spray out a liquid at, in <laughs> one other direction yeah. that light. And so you're, yeah, you're effectively. So maybe the liquid runs into the other liquid. Like, <laughs> if you super soaker me, I super soaker you exact in time. We're both totally dry. I think Star Wars has always been really concerned with scientific <laughs> and technical accuracy. I'm so sure I'm glad you're asking again. these hard you're questions. You're bringing us back down to Earth. Just, or... I, I like what they're doing. I think that it just like I was talking to my older brother today, who just isn't a huge Star Wars fan. Between, between I think, Rogue One uh, and Mandalorian has kind of pulled him back in, and now he's, like, really excited about, like, all these other spinoff shows. And I think I think Favreau and, and that team, Filoni, are doing a good job just kind of building out the universe in a way that brings in new fans and appeases old fans. And it's, it's you know, it's good for the whole fam. The whole fam. It is good for the fam. Yeah, good for the whole fan. Yeah. Just like another Nintendo podcast. I did actually think really fast. Okay, that last episode, I liked it. Did it. Was that anyone... Okay, when Luke approaches and, like, Baby Yoda's watching him from that, like, teeny screen, you know, like the CRT TV. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a very camera. old projector. And yeah. it keeps cutting back to that, like, again and again. I was irked by that. Anyone else? I was like, oh, can we just... <laughs> it's also not believable. Mm, it's part of that. the aesthetic. It's that, it's that old timey. I like the aesthetic. aesthetic. It's more just like, do I need to watch Baby Yoda <laughs> watching the, this? We're talking TV. about... Okay, but we're, yes. We're, we're talking you need about... to watch Baby Yoda watch anything. This is a yeah, franchise I'm, I'm that okay has like... That. 8-bit radar for for over the nine uh, nine films. <laughs> I don't have films. a problem with the quality of the TV. <laughs> yeah. I just meant, like, I wanted to see Luke in there doing it up, and instead it was, like, this goofy camcorder footage. Oh, you thought, I, thought, I thought that whole scene was pretty sweet, regardless. Yeah, just it was like, good. Okay. They're building it up. Like it's it. like they all kind of know that we know at this point it's probably yeah. Luke, yeah. but they're trying to build up that mystique. And He shows up in the Luke car. He's got the <laughs> Luke sword. You know, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I think... I think Rogue One was missing that. At the very end, they should have cut to like security camera footage of Darth That's Vader. That's the only thing Rogue One through. was missing. I hated Rogue, uh, Rogue One. For some God, the I'm with Jordan. I also terrible. hated Rogue One. Yeah, that would be what? The, um, mind yeah, blown. yeah. Mind I remember blown. Jordan and I have talked about Rogue One a lot. We have. Yeah, we've talked about like. But I do like, but I do like Krennic. I did like the villain. So yes. I only like yeah. the robot. I was A blue collar worker who made it all the way up and then got stopped. Just stomped on so hard and he just he just choked on his ambitions cue the intro let's rock and roll boys okay i actually do i do feel like though i was thinking today yeah, rogue one let it have it <laughs> no no <laughs> and trying to make a segue I was yeah. thinking today about, like, what are my top Nintendo moments from 2020 so we can do this roundup. And there there aren't many. Like, I feel like there wasn't, there's not a lot to talk. It makes sense, like we were saying earlier, that we were, we're all excited to talk mm-hmm. about Star Wars. So, yeah. There's no, the segue. Our top Nintendo moment of 2020 was Mandalorian Season 2. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another Nintendo podcast. Uh, I guess I'm your host since I'm introducing the show today. Matt Schultz and I'm joined by Austin Cumming. Hi. Jordan Weiner. Hey there. And Danny Tortelli. Hey y'all. And it's been a while. It's been a few months. We went on a little fall hiatus along with the rest of the world. And, uh, you know, I guess Nintendo as well because there wasn't a lot to uh, talk about or play. But we've been playing. And we've been talking, and we're excited to bring that uh, here today to this podcast. If, well, basically, the thought process was here. Hey, it's the end of 2020, and we're willing just to send this one off into the ether, never to be discussed again. But before we do, we wanted to talk about the year that was the Nintendo Switch in 2020. So we're each going to go around and share a highlight of the year, whether it's a specific game or more general Nintendo thing. And then something we'd like to see the big N bring in 2021. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to kick this off because like moments before this show, I uh, clicked on Nintendo's uh, Instagram story and lo and behold, they were like, hey, swipe up to find your Spotify-esque year in review, which they did last year. And it was, um, 
which was kind of a surprise, but this year they got a little more robust. Um, and I think I spent over 600 hours playing and the vast majority of those hours were spent in April, uh, which obviously was for Animal Crossing. So no surprise there. New uh, Leaf? But, wow, you really dug back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Wild World's good. I, I think for me, the, the, definitely, like, that's... It, everyone who's, like, logged on and, and seen me still playing, I've been playing that game, like, through all of the DLC that's come out, um, and it's just been... It's been something to get me through this this quarantine time. So I think the, the moment when I had, like, four or five friends over... Um, and we were just getting into the game and I had just picked my plot like next to the beach and I had laid out like a couple of chairs and the sun was setting and I had like built a bonfire and I'm like, oh my God, like we're all on my desert, like deserted island and we're mm -hmm. just chilling on this beach together. This is, this is kind of nice. Um, that and of course recording an A&P or t episode or two uh, in the basement of my, my mansion. Mm. And that was a beautiful place you had prepared for us and we're grateful for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's gotten better. <laughs> <laughs> that, I believe. Uh, speaking of which, Matt, as someone who has continually played Animal Crossing now into the winter season, what do you look for out of the game? Is, the, is just oh, the regular rotation of Animal Crossing still... Because you're still playing a lot, like a lot, a lot. Like, you, I mean, all you're putting... A, I mean, just more time than any of us <laughs> possibly could it's devote to anything. Um, the, it's a lot, yeah. Do, is it's just the seasonal content feeling totally yeah. sufficient and great, or is there something where you would like to see the game evolve? Well, I think for me, growing up, uh, I have vivid memories of playing Animal Crossing during like the Christmas, winter holidays, like Thanksgiving to Christmas and or Toy Day, um, and <laughs> and just like the way, like I grew up in California, never like experienced snow prior to like seven or eight years ago. Um, and so that was like, oh my God, it's Christmas. They're like, the, the like music is like got little like jingle bells in the background and like the pine trees have lights in them and this is awesome. And there's snow on the ground and I've wanted to see what that same feeling was going to look like. And Nintendo introduced a bunch of like new holiday items and toys and things. And I was like, ah, I just want to play to experience at least a full year of this game and especially like like what this winter holiday season i really feel like like they've been doing all the updates that i've expected and i've wanted to see like what is the 2020 like like new horizons version of all my favorite old things and animal crossing going to look like and i'm getting to the point where i'm like all right like running out of holidays and they've said that new stuff's going to come out but like i'm probably wrapping up my time playing with the game after after this holiday Famous last words. I'll I'll probably put in. Yeah, we definitely don't believe that for one time. <laughs> what would they have to do to keep you going, though, if you uh, wanted to be like, oh, I'm really doubling. Yeah, uh, they'd have to introduce new buildings, bring in back some some old characters. Brewster, you know that he's a he's a. I can't Just keep forgetting if he's a if he's a, a pigeon or something. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's he he uh, brews coffee, and you got all these <laughs> the. Nook and Tins is like so tiny uh, or Nook's Cranny or I don't know what it's called officially, but it's that like has gotten like six expansions in past games and is only like like two advanced. Here? Like Three? it's gotten two. Yeah, there's just like I want more buildings. I want there to be more like fun characters like brought over from Pocket Camp, which I think looks really cool, but I don't play. Um, and yeah, Gwen plays that every day. My it's got like it amazing items in that game. Like they like went all out on on creating items for that game that like have never existed in the main mainline franchise. So for me, yeah, it needs all that because I'm like three fish away, two bugs away, and like a whole lot of paintings. Because <laughs> <laughs> bleep, crazy Pika. red, you he son never of shows up. <laughs> So yeah, that's what it'll take. Oh, so yeah, my my moment would be Paper Mario. No, just kidding. My, <laughs> my Nintendo moment <laughs> would definitely also be Animal Crossing, but like isolated back to last last April. I went hard, and then I I've poked in every once in a while, but I actually haven't poked in yet this holiday season. You've inspired me, Matt, to just poke in just to experience the magic for like an hour until I get bored and yep, there's nothing more to do. I have an entire <laughs> room to decorate, and I haven't even like felt the motivation to attempt to decorate it because it takes so long to acquire new items. Um, and that just kind of broke it for me. So definitely still like a super highlight of the year for me. That game was 
awesome and like was everything that I needed it and wanted it to be at that time. But it, it hasn't been enough to keep me going, I would say. That's a, just a briefly interject, but that is why like the store needs to get bigger because yeah, you can sure. only have like three items a day that are like literally the same items you've seen for months. You know, like I bought that back in April. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you just need more of a chance to like to do that. So. Yeah. I was surprised it hadn't upgraded to Nookington's at this point. I felt like I yeah. had done my due diligence to make it upgrade and yeah. you did, any, you did everything did any of us could, Jordan. Don't blame yeah, yourself. I did, I did everything. <laughs> <laughs> what more does it need? <laughs> Give me the department store. Yeah. Uh, Danny, what's been your highlight of the year? I also uh, Animal Crossing um, and I... Okay, that's the uh, end of the show. That's the end. Ampy's dead. We're not talking about <laughs> I... And we all played one game for 50 hours. <laughs> and I'm definitely in a close second. And I only say that because I also played it like within the first couple of days of its launch, like religiously up until about June. And then I, I like fell off the wagon for a few days. And then a few days became like I haven't visited the Isle of Dandelore in quite a long time. Um, <laughs> that's that's my isle, by the way, uh, Isle of Dandelore. Um, but yeah, we know it was I'm definitely one of those customers who if this were a quote unquote normal year, I probably wouldn't have bought, you know, bought the game, but it was one of those, like, you know what? I'm going to have a lot of time on my hands. I heard it's a good distraction. Let's just try it. And then I definitely sunk a lot of hours into it. Um, yeah. Close, close second is um, I'm just going to call them. One is smash brothers, Mario Kart, as mm-hmm. far as a way to just continue to stay in touch with folks online. Um, Games we've had, obviously, for a while, but they've just been such a great, just a great way to connect with people and, like, pull up a video chat and just start shit-talking each other um, mm-hmm. over so such a simple about, game. Baby. Yeah. This is like that, those are the games where I'm like, oh, thank God I can dust, like, we can dust these off and, like, Nintendo's online infrastructure is good enough to, like, host, especially, like, Mario Kart. Even the game is so old at this point. Like, it's still... <laughs> Like it, it runs really well and be able to play with like up to 12 friends potentially and create like tournaments and circuits right now has been really, that's been really fun. It also makes me frustrated that like there aren't more like great online multiplayer games like Nintendo franchises. Like this would have been a great opportunity for, you know, Mario Party to have like four more maps and like an online feature. Um, I'll say for my, you know, highlight of the year, this is definitely 2020 being a year we didn't have a lot of really big first party games outside of the megaton of Animal Crossing. You know, so I think something Nintendo did really well this year though, especially in the pandemic is still a continued focus on presentation just in that we've long seen them now. They were, of course, the Nintendo Direct and their approach to E3 was kind of a big change of pace when that first started a few years ago. And, you know, this year we saw all companies do it to varying degrees of success. And um, I think Nintendo's just really at a good spot with that. They felt ready, you know, um, though doubtful it was their intention. They felt very ready to do presentations. And so uh, they, they really knocked many of them out of the park. The Smash Bros. announcements have continued to be just like total delights with Sakurai uh, going over all the intricacies and homages that are packed into each one of these DLC fighters. Sephiroth was such a cool reveal and really cool in the game to play because you like unlock him now early if you beat him in a special match and it's totally superfluous and very easy. To, you can make it very easy to beat him and you've paid for the character anyway and he's coming out in a couple days, but it gave me a reason to hop back into a game that I rarely play because I was like, oh, I want to get him early. They made an event of it. And so kind of just tying that in with the presentations Nintendo has made uh, has been fun. Like the indie directs, games like Hades and whatnot that have come out of it. I feel like the Nintendo has stayed in the conversation for most of this year, despite Animal Crossing really being the only heavy hitter that they had this entire year, a year that had both the PS5 and Xbox series consoles. Uh, Nintendo still seems like it's in the conversation, even though there's very, very little actually coming out. So their presentations though, uh, very good. And I've looked forward to those and enjoyed uh, each one. And when it comes to sales, they're not only in the conversation, they're still leading the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. still definitely dominating. And I've, you know, plenty of coworkers and things asking about, you know, the Switch and uh, 
you know, wanting to pick one up or having still having a very hard time doing so. So it still feels, you know, very relevant despite any really big games uh, since Animal Crossing. So I thought this was interesting. This is from Kotaku. I was um, earlier today. I was thinking like, oh, besides Animal Crossing, like what was a big Nintendo moment? And I was mm-hmm. having a hard time thinking of it. And this hits the nail on the head for me. Nintendo published only 10 physical games in 2020. Of those 10 games, five were remakes or re-releases. And of the remaining five, only two were developed by Nintendo-owned studios, which I think says a lot about the kind Ooh. of drought of Nintendo games this year. But I think yeah. despite that, it's like we were just saying, it's really impressive that they were like still able to lead the conversation and uh, like rely- what Nintendo's always done well, which is like rely on their core properties to keep the momentum. Um, yeah going which is cool and there's a lot of promise for um 2021 with the switch pro the zelda anniversary which they hopefully handle better than mario anniversary um the theme park which can we talk about the theme Mm -hmm. park at some point because that nintendo direct was how teeny do we think this thing is it looks so beautiful but i every time i see the photo i'm like is this just yeah, it looks kind of like a little like a cavern, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if they're gonna build it out because right now they only have Mario stuff. I assume they're gonna want to add some kind of at least a Zelda component to it eventually, like yeah, those really little think, pieces yeah. of it up, like they have. Yeah, the like what they've done parks. with the Harry Potter and mm. Star Wars parks of like this much comes at launch, and then we'll slowly add the park DLC. I, I know and... the like yeah, the, <laughs> the space <laughs> constraints are always the challenge, and I assume that's what's going on for their Japan theme park. I. As Florida I understand it, the fine. Orlando one is going to be a lot larger, or is going to be larger to begin with. So I don't know yeah. if uh, if Universal Orlando is just going to uh, have more of that. But it it looks like just fantastic. It, it looks, looks amazing, designed and fun and joyful. Yeah, I, I'm so excited to pandemic just to ex- unfriendly. <laughs> <laughs> that especially that Mario Kart game. I'm like, okay, you're putting on these. Headsets. Yeah, you put on those goggles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, these are all being sanitized. So I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, you need to. You, yeah. you have to prove you have the vaccine first, and then you get to ride that ride, I guess. But that that yeah. then you have to like lick the goggles to activate them. Which is a weird choice. <laughs> But all the all the all the like touching of like the slamming all the the bricks. I'm like, man, this guy, Miyamoto's touching all right. kinds of things around the park right now. <laughs> <laughs> just Protect like, that man. I, it's I, okay. I, I just love that there's definitely gonna be like a like a toad character like standing there to sanitize the block after <laughs> someone yeah. touches it. I just right, want the nice little one. I want the little question mark block like uh cake thing that they that they showed in the restaurant. That's what I'm here <laughs> Ooh, for. Oh yeah in yeah the, in the toad restaurant. Yeah was that was cool. That. It was cool to kind of see the uh the like the the toads like in the back like in the kitchen like moving around and stuff and but Mostly, I just want to see. I, I want to experience that Mario Kart ride, and I certainly hope the poor that sur- the poor surf class of Toads just again oh, like same thing with Paper <laughs> the Mario, house elves, like- the house elves of the <laughs> Mario universe. It's a very yeah, disgusting give them, give them cast them a sock system that they have in that in that. Room. Do you think there will be any any folded Toads that you can find around? Uh, around? I think Too absolutely not. Too soon. <laughs> Given the luck, I came away liking that game, but we have. It's like that's a conversation Jordan and I still have to like record at some point. There are plenty of things I like. It's a conversation like... that's just me trying to remember what I was mad about six months well, ago. And... Well, <laughs> actually, this is, this is a good segue because because Jordan, you mentioned the two games, and so I'm assuming that was Paper Mario and Animal Crossing were the two new I new think releases. So. I have. New, okay. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. we did. That's right. Yeah, by Nintendo, because from Technicoe, we do have Hyrule Warriors, Hyrule Warriors which I yeah. really have enjoyed. Um, playing wow. I played a bit of uh, but as far as you know even that is it's hard to like really recommend people outside of those who know they really love Breath of the Wild and want to see something that may or may not deliver on a story capacity um, but you know has things going for it and I think Nintendo is smart about the way they trickle out these items you know they managed to make even you know Fire Emblem for instance had its anniversary uh this year and it got like a fun art book and whatnot that ended up being like everything nintendo very hard to get so it ended up creating like a little more conversation around what was just like a very basic um digital release of the first fire emblem game but the 
but still Nintendo trickles these things out in a way that like keeps them popping back up. And I think that was definitely like a strength of theirs, despite no really big games. I would just like to say for next year, as far as, you know, what could I like to see out of Nintendo for 2021? The big thing uh, feels like more care given to these properties for their anniversaries. I think that's the biggest thing. So we have Mario's 35th and Fire Emblem 30th. And, you know, the Mario Collection, like totally great to see those games. But now that we're a couple months out from it, I definitely feel a sense of disappointment for the way that those three games were delivered. Namely in that, you know, uh, Mario 64 was really given no significant visual polish and has audio wonkiness and sunshine took forever to even get inverted controls and it also has you know all the same work controller support yeah i finally got that but it's like came so late like you know what was the like what was the rush even more so because it seems like a lot of they discovered that it was positioned to come out probably earlier in the pandemic initially and was pushed i don't know if to to fill a hole or because of pandemic delays um but the yeah, it just feels like, you know, I love those games, but even like playing Galaxy on the Switch, like the to collect the star bits is weirdly taxing without a Wii remote. It's not intuitive even playing it on the touchscreen. It's basically not like playable. I mean, it it is, but it's a very slow experience, which involves like running, stopping, picking your hands off the Joy-Con, like grabbing the bits. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Really playing the game, and even though I you know love that game, the it feels like, oh, like there are many smarter solutions to having to like have done that. If I could just swipe on the screen and move the cursor around fluidly, then I could collect many star bits with one motion, but instead I have to go individually touch each one, which means I'm, you know, it's just these like obvious oversights. And Fire Emblem, it's cool. They did this, uh, you know, new translation of the game. The game did come out in DS like a decade ago. Uh, I'm extremely, hard. <laughs> extremely hard. Extremely hard, ugly game? DS yeah. game. Yeah. But um, it's neat that it's out, but that too, and I've been playing that and I'm just like three or four levels in and, you know, I'm enjoying it, but there are obvious like quality of life things that they should have implemented. So for instance, you can rewind in this game, which is nice. It's uh, more basic than the turn wheel that the more recent Fire Emblem games have had, but opposed to just like holding down, let's say the left bumper to rewind, which should be obvious in other games like the Mega Man Digital Eclipse collection implemented. Or um, even instead, like being able to see see the map, right? See your your ability to move or your enemy's ability to like where can they actually yeah, move? Yeah, those things like, would be really nice as far as like updating the game. And I even just mean like from a menu perspective, being laid on top <laughs> of the game. So not like to rewind you to go into multiple menus to turn back a whole turn, opposed to just like oh, you know, quickly going back or to make a save state you have to go a couple menus in and um, the you can fast forward, which is great, but you can't fast forward without also changing the speed of the music so then the music becomes like intolerable to listen to so you can just turn it off but then the game is very quiet like it's just these things where plenty of retro collections have done that better and this is still like a seven dollar game when we have the nes collection as part of the online subscription that this could have just been a part of so i just like to see especially with like metroid coming up just a little more care and i i gotta think the reason why nintendo doesn't do big um you know, why they don't have Nintendo directs about these properties is because they feel like maybe ner- not as sure of the quality of the thing. You know, like if they do a bunch of Nintendo directs about Paper Mario, for instance, we would have known ahead of time that like the experience system was gone, you know, and there wasn't any leveling. And so, yeah. but because there wasn't, um, it's, you know, that game has strengths and faults, but Nintendo has so little, it's like that would have been good for some Nintendo directs or developer you know get the developers out there in front of people or show creators you know um in the same way they show sakurai but i just don't think they have that the mario 35th anniversary is really gonna hinge on bowser's fury (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's another thing too which is uh it feels lazy you know i I, love bowser's furry but i don't know that i need to play that (laughs) i i really want to know what i mean i'm curious to see what that looks like i like their little um kind of like ominous cutscene to the mm-hmm. creepy rainy like tower or whatever whenever they show showcase that but but yeah it's, it's like, like can we not get more like i loved pikmin 3 but i don't need to buy it again because i 
did everything back yeah. on the Wii U. And yeah. I would like to play the extra chapter, but certainly that's not enough. You know, and I wish, you know, it, it seems like it would not be that big of an ask to put more into this game, especially because so much, Jordan, like you highlighted, so much what we got this year were repackagings with minimal extra. Xenoblade was the same story. I feel like, though, because of that, if you are, if you are not, like, I mean, the collection, yeah, the Mario collection is its own thing, but, like, this would be, this is a good year if you're, if you didn't have a Wii U, you know, and it's, you know, yeah. to, to Most play. Most years are good if you didn't have a Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I mean, this, yeah, I mean, but anytime Nintendo does that with, with the deluxe, like, with Pikmin, like, it's just, it's like, right, hey, this is another great game that you probably didn't get a chance to play yet. You're going to love it, and it's going to be, it's, I mean, I've, that game got great reviews on the Switch, just like it did, but it's like, I played the crap out of that, you know, on the Wii U, and I'm, I don't need to go back just so I can play, like, the Christmas map. Um, yeah. As much as I want to. But yeah. Uh, the Toy Day map, thank you. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, the Nintendo Instagram, like, they keep releasing these really well done, like, CGI, like, like, they like do these like mock-ups of like Nintendo characters and they just did one of like the Pikmin like around a Christmas tree. Like like not like from a game. Like they this is just like its own produced image for Instagram. Whoa. Um and they did that. They're, did all, you like, see? they're all like marching into church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all got their little like ties and sweaters on. No, did you did you uh like you've seen the one of like Mario kind of like breathing out like um like it's like cold, like a like He's kind of like, or is, does he have like a mug or something? It's like a winter one of Mario that they recently posted. That like, what? Yeah, it's 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 great. He's not even wearing a mask. He's just openly breathing. <laughs> <laughs> just spreading those exhaling on everybody. Particles. Yeah, he voted yeah. for yeah. this one. <laughs> like it's oh, this. I've never seen that. It's no, this really. It's, so fast. Oh. it's it's the same one that you know. Pretentious it's, 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 Harvard Mario. <laughs> like you remember oh, uh, a year ago when they like had him like on the beach uh and yeah, everyone's yeah, like oh my god yeah, sunshine yeah. No. confirmed we all know right yeah so oh, too soon i love i love that they're doing that stuff it did, uh it did come out but yeah i think the the yeah, we hope for something better for for zelda um yeah. so so speaking of yeah, which what like, do you want next yeah. year what are you what are you hoping what are your 2021 Nintendo resolutions. Definitely a better handling of the Zelda anniversary. Though, honestly, if they just allow me to play Wind Waker and Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, like, as is on the Switch, that's yeah. that's fine. I'll still, you know, I'll dish out the money for that. And yeah, I'll definitely sure I'll dish out the it. money. That's not, that's not yeah, that's not really a question. Um, also, this is, this is kind of a, a side thing, but um, I highly recommend this YouTube channel, Game Makers Toolkit, which I think I've mentioned before, and we can link to them. But every year they do a roundup of accessibility in gaming. Mm. And as they pointed out, Nintendo, not great at this. Uh, Animal Crossing reliant on uh, sound cues for you to be able to interact with many things in the game doesn't have subtitles <laughs> as far as i'm aware um like not mm. no no customization options whatsoever meanwhile we have indie games out here who are like super overperforming in this area where you can customize the colors of your game if you are colorblind or have any mm -hmm. other kind of yeah, visual I mean, disability you can customize the audio options for your game you can like there's so many things and for a major company to be uh like skimping on this is a bit uh frustrating we have like small teams of one or two devs that are able to keep accessibility yeah, in mind so that's something i would love for them to do in general i just want to give a shout out on that front a lot of big companies too taking it very seriously like if mm -hmm. you play any big ubisoft game uh from this fall they start with like the text, uh, text to voice on like from the outset, and they, there's like a whole slew of play when playing Assassin's Creed, for instance, like tons and tons of different accessibility options for various, uh, you know, hard of hearing or seeing, and all types of uh, options you have to like work your way through, such that somebody who you know it has to deal with those uh, conditions would have it, it very clearly laid out ways in which they can enjoy the game at the same level, and yeah, those are. Nintendo always falls behind when it comes to like online infrastructure and uh, multiplayer options and kind of the things that other companies have long uh, lost, you know, left them in the dust for. But this is something that's, you know, more important than those for a lot of people. And um, yeah, it is 
unacceptable, honestly, to not have more yeah. of those things. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, Nintendo really kind of brands themselves as like, we're the accessible game system. Like they're for yeah, families, you, they're for kids. Think? It's, yeah, yeah. it's, um, you know, and so like anyone can see a Switch and it looks so like fun and like anybody can pick it up. Anyone can play it. We have games for anyone, not just, you know, the stereotypical mm-hmm. person who might normally be a gamer. So I just think it's a, such a major um, growth area for them that, it does seem so incongruent with with their mission and who they are you know like you they they kind of get a pass just by being like the brand nintendo almost like you feel like that's synonymous with like approachability to gaming and accessibility to gaming and you're like oh oh, wait a minute you know like finally and i mean i know this is a different a different issue but around inclusivity i mean they just updated Animal Crossing to include a bunch of new hairstyles and, and skin tones, yeah. which yeah. had never existed in the game. And and truthfully, I'm not sure if after you know June, July, August that that update was if that update was coming or not. Um, it's 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 hard to say. I'm glad I'm glad there's you know they they packaged it in with a lot of other updates, but um, and that's just one game in particular. But you would think Animal Crossing, this megaton game that's continuing to sell and move systems would be yeah would like would maybe have more more ways to play for everyone uh it baked in but it it does seem very un nintendo to give you access to like changing too much you know um yeah such as like the y axis for super mario sunshine (laughs) game like for sure these are the yeah definite ways in which they are lagging I think just like really fast when when we were talking about the Mario like on the beach last year and being like oh like it's sunshine I I think that's the biggest example for me of how these anniversaries have dropped the ball like because that felt very exciting like the idea of sunshine coming back because I think it's with an expectation of like this game will be given the love and affection that we feel nostalgic for and it's going to be given maybe a fresh coat of paint or something extra, or they're going to like, you know, fix these weird control elements or the bugs in it. And yeah, the fact that none of those things were addressed. And in the case of the Y axis actually changed, like for the worse, for a lot of people, the, um, yeah, it just feels like, uh, I have to remind myself that like sunshine is playable now, which, um, I'm glad it is in that collection and that it's there, but it just feels like, man, that, you know, if when you got to resell all yeah. of these things, like let's, I, I wish there was that degree of effort because when it, you get Wind Waker HD and like when Wind Waker HD came out and was announced, like awesome, it was awesome, it was so exciting, and that was in. The, I mean, yeah, people were excited to see that art style and aesthetic in full HD, and it it they fixed a bunch of it. Like that was a proper like like you know re-release of that game and it got a lot of hype and like how 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 sunshine didn't fall into that category like it's the perfect it's the perfect opportunity and it def- definitely feels yeah. like a, like well when do you, when's the next time you're gonna see like a I mean, maybe there's a sunshine sequel like down the road that'll kind of wave that banner but it just feels like okay well they re- they released it so they're never gonna go back to that at least not not a long while yeah, and and if you wait until after March, you can't play it anyway because it's getting delisted. So it's just, yeah, this like weird Disney Vault uh, needless demand element to sell a product that kind of doesn't hold, doesn't stand on its own legs. So Austin, what are you looking forward to for twenty twenty? Probably buying a lot of really lazy uh, remasters is probably what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> I think you know I'm I'm looking forward to big. Nintendo games, and I think when looking at the Switch, Switch, love it. It's been awesome. I enjoyed my metrics, like you were saying, Matt. I certainly played a lot of it. But um, when I think about like the big games that have been Switch exclusive, they've really been Breath of the Wild, which wasn't an exclusive, and um, Odyssey. Like, and a lot of the other games I've really enjoyed on Switch have been things that have been on other platforms or PC long ago, like Hollow Knight or Hades and things like that. Or they've been Wii U games that you know many people missed, and so um, I I just hope that we get some heavy hitters and uh, things to look forward to in that. Because it feels like we're always like, oh, well, it's more Wii U ports, but Breath of the Wild Two is coming, or 
what have you, and um, you know, ready for it. Yeah, I hear that. That made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true though, because when you think of that top ten list, take out I would take out Mario Kart because that originally came out on the Wii U. For right? sure. Let's not count that. Wait, what do we have as far as unique? Are we talking about our A and P top ten? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that was good. And Super Mario Party is a fine game, and I gave Danny a hard time. <laughs> the um, yeah, Breath of the Wild. We'll give it to Wild, Switch because Odyssey. What do you, think of it? I, you have to throw an Animal Crossing now for how big sure. that hit this year. Luigi's Mansion Three was great. Uh huh. Smash. Uh, um, Fire Emblem. Yeah. Well, Smash is like an edge case, but we'll give it to him. Sure, Fire, Fire Emblem. Emblem. It's like, do you count the Pokemon and those are all games? great like, games even like even if you yeah. count both I, skews as one like i, I think guess you count pokemon count i would count them um but like it's still it's good it's a good list but you're still just like what has sony had in that same amount of time like exclusive yeah, way, party way stuff. more since 2016 what has Xbox, yeah, uh, never mind we'll, we'll leave them out of the conversation but like, <laughs> uh okay people love forza yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i love xbox but yes. too but uh it's all yeah, yeah, same sure. thing like i find myself i enjoy as much third party stuff on the switch as i do first party um right and a lot of those third party experiences are often not as strong as they are elsewhere right just given the right limitations and you know and that's even hardware. that's even brought me to things i was looking forward to playing on the switch like immortals phoenix rising um i saw how it was performing on there and like i already went and got the xbox version there you go so like there it is sponsored um, by yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix. Now, did you get it before they uh, marked twenty dollars off, uh, or did you did, did you they miss really that twenty dollars off? Oh yeah, it's <laughs> on sale yeah. now. This is the show. Danny's going to do you find something in my thirty day return window? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Um, yeah, those are where we. I'm ready for some more heavy hitters for the Switch, especially because we're getting closer and closer to having. I mean, now that we have the PS5 and new Xbox, a lot of things are going to be exclusive to them. You know, that we're going to lose these PS4 and Xbox One uh, games. So, so, so Danny, what are, would those heavy hitters be for you? What's going to make Switch 2021 a good experience for you? Um, Especially I mean, I, when you're looking to get an Xbox Series X, right? So Eventually, yeah, right. Um, yeah, like, do I have, like, the list of, like, cannot wait for breath of wild 2 of course like that's the thing i'm probably looking forward to the most um and you know the switch pro hardware that would be great um just to just to keep some kind of par with the other two uh systems i think the biggest thing i'm also looking forward to um and i'm glad you started that conversation jordan uh not just the accessibility but the representation stuff both you know in film they call it behind and in front of the screen Mm -hmm. um hearing that from nintendo both on the developer side and on the like the game itself you know um it's one of those things that admittedly i hadn't probably given it as much thought as i should have the past couple of years uh once i kind of reclaimed my nintendo fandom but it is something that like yeah same exact reason this family friendly very welcoming company like why can't we there are a lot of different families like they're they don't all look like you know these characters that are the main present ones and yeah, give at, a quick shout out yeah right <laughs> um, <laughs> to give a quick shout out going back to the animal crossing thing um yeah same thing as far as like the why don't why aren't there more ethnic hairstyles um we actually retweeted on the twitter account um uh, her name's tanisha bracken hux she started the social media campaign um way back in august um about i think she started a little bit before then but it really picked up steam in august um for animal crossing uh she is a black writer and game reviewer and she's like i love this game but come on i my hair is like my life in real life like give me the option and um part of me hates to think if we didn't have those terrible events this year that same thing like we talked about would that have even happened even that small thing would that not have happened so that's something else I'm just, that's not a necessarily 2021 year thing, although I hope the sooner the better, but it's just something that I'm like, I hope Nintendo could be a little bit more uh, forward about this and really kind of put their, put their resources where their, where their comments are too. Um, but yeah, of course, give me uh, Ocarina of Time running in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, like we see those YouTube clips uh, creep out. Like, yeah, I want all that too, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, um, I, I really, I mean, to what Austin, like to Austin's point, like, yeah, I was thinking about the Switch and I'm like, okay, I've played a lot more indies, I think, than I ever would have just because of a lot of them getting ported to Switch. And, and I think that 
the joy of being able to pick up the system and and play games um i think continually brings me back or i i I opt into that versus like the xbox that i have um in terms of just playing things at the moment and i miss i think although animal crossing has filled in that like kind of breath of the wild like i can't wait to pour time to this it it did it it did so in a different way and i'm i'm looking forward to those heavy hitters but i i think they're coming and i feel like like i feel like 2021 second half is going to be like pretty big like i i do think we're going to at least find out more about metroid i think nintendo is going to give us more of a view of like why why own a switch right now um and i i mean i want to say breath of the wild 2 is coming out you know this time next year but i could also see it getting pushed till march of 2022 and then launching with a switch pro um or whatever skew um i also see that i, I as much as I think I want there to be like a new Mario Kart, and I can only imagine what that team's working on the past seven, eight years. Uh, I imagine that like there's got to be something like c- coming oh, from so that good. team. That's what they're working on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really interesting story for another podcast. That that home circuit, but yeah, um, uh, you know, I, I I just feel like there's. I'm really curious to see how the pandemic long term affected what their release schedule looked like, and if it serendipitously like put them in a great a, like a, a much better spot for 2021 than they were actually planning given maybe titles that they just timing just wasn't going to be right or marketing wasn't going to be prepared or the development needed to take longer and now they've got more content for like summer and fall of you know the second half of next year so i don't know i'm, I, I'm excited for that but it's also like okay, like Wii U is about, or Wii U whew, Switch mm-hmm. is a, Switch is about to be like in the very tall shadow and even taller shadow of the PlayStation Five. Um, yeah, those are monster. monster especially as they as they become tall, more tall, available, yeah. you know, and 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 as as these true next gen titles start to kind of to come out and take away the the steam, like. I just imagine Nintendo has got to have something big. And so for me to make it uh, uh, worth it next year, I'd like to see um, like three, three big games. Like I would like to see like a redo of their launch year, which had Odyssey and, uh, and Zelda and what, and, and didn't they release Mario, Mario Kart? Kart? <laughs> like, so they re-released Mario Kart. Yes. So yeah. You I, re-bought Mario Kart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> deluxe yeah and uh and i'm still i'm still time, playing baby. it mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i'm hoping so. for a ring fit adventure too hey you know <laughs> did you did you beat the story continue. did i beat this i made it to the final level and then i started my uh programming uh course and i, I confess i have not played but I, I did make it pretty far in the game. Yes. And genuinely, I would buy a second one. It's very fun. I like that Nintendo takes these risks and makes these like cool different ways of, of playing games. I find them to be super fun and hilarious. Um, so if there was, you know, I was joking, but I was now that I say it, I'm like, yeah, I would buy, I would buy that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So did that not count as a original title, like new game? That it was came out the year before. Oh, de- oh god! It just became really popular this year because everyone was couldn't go to the gym. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they they kind of and just a lot of like Drago stands. Yeah, hey, <laughs> yeah. you're locked at home and then you see Drago. It's you know, oh, old new game. Thirst. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up there. Thank you so much for joining us with another Nintendo podcast. We wish you a safe and uh, happy New Year. Um, from from us to you, this was Austin Cummings, and I was joined by Jordan Weiner. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Danny Tortelli. Wait, wait your Still turn long. to say goodbye. And Matthew Schultz, you may now speak. We'll see you in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> That's an A&P guarantee. <laughs> uh, this is